Hey guys, this is Deb Joyce Meek from Delight of My Art, and today I have number two in our Holiday Craft Fair series, these really neat natural wood slice ornaments. I got these on Amazon, I think in 2019, and they've just been sitting in my drawer, and I thought, I've got to use these, and I cannot believe how easy it was to make all of these adorable wreaths. I'm using this cottage wreaths stamp set and this seems to fit perfectly on these discs. I got the ones that were listed as 2.8 to 3.1 inches in diameter and um, I'm loving it. So I have a link in the description of a similar item that had great reviews. The ones that I got in three years ago are no longer available. But um, I think that these other ones are going to be just as nice because they had lots of good reviews. So let's go ahead and show you how to make these. These are going to be such a great addition to your craft fair or just as general gifts or for your tree. You could fill your own tree with stuff from your stamp room. So fun. So um, let's go ahead and get down to the desktop here. Hi, Julie. All right. So this is super easy. The colors that I'm using are Evening Evergreen, Soft Succulent, and Real Red. And I'm just using four stamps right from that same set. I think, yeah, even the words are from that same set right here. Merry Christmas. It's a nice little one that will fit right in the middle of that wreath. So first, I'm going to start with Soft Succulent. And I do want to point out that this is a distinctive stamp, which means that it's made up of lots of little dots, kind of like in a newspaper where you see the different tones just with one color. So if your ink pad is too juicy, you won't be able to see all of those little tones. So I have a tip for you. Take a plastic spoon and just make sure that you push the ink into the surface of your pad since they're stored upside down, as you can see when it's just sitting on your desktop. The um, top of the ink pad is facing down. So all of this ink that we're pressing in will come back to the surface once you close the lid. So you're not losing any ink this way, which is really nice. So I'm just gonna just gently press that back into the pad and then I'm just gonna wipe this with a tissue or a baby wipe or something in a little bit. So just going to ink up my leafy wreath image and press firmly onto the disc. I have done zero work. This has been sitting in my um, my drawer for three years. None of these seem to have even cracked, so hopefully I got a good batch here. But I'm just gonna let that sit on there just for like a second. And that one didn't even turn out. <laughs> I haven't had any mistakes until now. So some of these are not going to be flat. You are working with wood, so you do have to be aware that you will have some mistakes. And this just goes to show you, I'm going to use this as a tester, <clears throat> excuse me, to test out other stamp sets. Because there's two sides here. So this will not go to waste. I can test out different ink colors and actually when I'm going to use the other side of this for what we're doing next. So no waste. That's fine. I actually got a whole bunch. I think I got 60 of these. So I'll go ahead and try it on this next one. Of course, I'll go live and not, <laughs> not stamp these right. Wouldn't that be funny? All right. It is pretty easy as long as your wood piece is flat. So if you're having trouble, maybe go ahead and sand and dust those. But that looks good right there. And then <clears throat> we can actually probably even save this one because I'm taking this little leafy stamp. This is like kind of two little pine bough things. And we're going to use Evening Evergreen and just kind of fill in the details here. So we can probably just save anything that got misprinted. And we're adding a bow. So if there's any missing bits, cover it up with a bow. <laughs> All right, that one looks good. Let's see if we can save this one. All right. By the way, I am having a craft fair this weekend on Saturday at our local Williamston Lions Club. So that should be fun. 
I'll have a bunch of kits for sale. So here's real red. This is what we're gonna do with this. We're gonna take these little berries and I've really inked up the stamp. I was playing earlier, so I just needed to share because this was so quick and easy. Look how quick these are coming together. I'm just gonna turn this so it doesn't look too uniform. The trickiest part about all of this is making sure that the ink goes straight onto your your wood piece and also that you don't drop your inked up stamp onto your your ornament when you're turning it and all that but these come together so fast I just think that it's funny that that first one didn't print. Well, that's really funny. All right, so Merry Christmas. I'm just going to put that right in the middle, but I'm going to make sure that the pre-drilled holes that they did, I like that they do the pre-drilled holes because, I'm sorry, yes, Williamson Eagles. Thank you, Julie. Um, and I'm going to put this right in the middle. Isn't that so pretty? So now I just have to add a bow. So I like this real red ribbon. It comes in a combo pack with garden green, but it's so soft so that you can tie really nice bows with it. And you really don't need to make too big of a bow on here either because these are pretty small little ornaments. All right. So again, if you'd use this for your craft fair, I would love to know how they sold and how that went for you. I think these are cute. I've never made them and sold them at a craft fair, so I don't know how they're going to do. Oh, there's my scissors right in front of me. Um, so I'm hoping that they do well, but I think they will. I think they're really cute. I have a tiny Christmas tree that I got at a yard sale, I think. And I'm going to set that on my craft desk and then that will be a nice display for these. So I will either glue this on with a glue dot. And if that doesn't seem to stick after a couple days, I'm going to um, maybe put this on with uh, hot glue. So I'm not sure yet whether this will hold with just a glue dot or not. We'll see. But I will go ahead and just make all my little bows for all of these. And... I did this color combo, but I wanted to try a new one live with you and see if we can make one in pink and purple tones. Wouldn't that be fun? So I'm going to get a couple other discs out and play around with some other colors. So here's another bow. And then in the when way I bought the discs, it actually comes with twine. So I can cut the length of twine that I need for tying the bows on there. But those turned out really cute. Some of them have this really cool chunky edge and some of them have the smoother edge. You really get a lot of different shapes in here. There might be a few that you might not be able to use or maybe the, the wood color is a little bit weird. Julie, you do hot glue. Okay, I'm, I'm probably leaning towards hot glue too. I'm not sure about the glue dots. I would feel bad if the ribbon came off, especially if I was selling them. So good idea. So here's one that's super chunky and it's a little bit more um, oblong. So I was going to do a different stamp on this one. This one was kind of interesting too, but they're all really usable uh, so far that I've gone through. And I think I've gone through a good dozen or so here so let's oh becky says she missed the beginning where do i get the wood ornaments i got them on amazon and in the description here i have a link to something similar i got them three years ago so the link that i got them from is no longer available we've got some sun coming in the window so <laughs> but um i found another one that had really good reviews i always read reviews on amazon because um even if something looks like it's highly rated, sometimes the most recent reviews are not that great. So you want to look at the reviews. But um, the one that I looked at looked like it looked <laughs> good. So um, that's good news. I had a couple hundred good reviews. So let's go ahead and try one in another color scheme, this pink. All right. So let me get my... This is how they came packaged. This has been sitting just over here on, in the corner for years now. So, got a little bark dust. 
but that's not too bad. Ooh, this one's cool. Look at that. So it's got a little bit of a funny line, but that's okay. Everything's a little bit unique. With these ornaments, you're going to get unique and special um, colors and shapes and all that. So hopefully they're just all flat. All right, I'm going to put these inks away and we're going to get out some pinks. And I don't know exactly which pink is going to be good because I didn't test this out yet. So I got out these colors right here and I was thinking of doing the berries and the words in this blackberry bliss because I thought that would pop and show up on all of the other colors but I'm not sure whether I want to do um, the base the, the leaves in this one or this one so let, let me know what, what you think would this would this be a little bit more um, different noticeable or should I try this one polished pink let me know while I'm cleaning my stamps here which one you think I should do for the this leafy part? Flirty Flamingo or Polished Pink? So I'm just going to get out my stamp and scrub here. I love this thing. Just scrub on the wet side, scrub on the dry side, and the stamp is clean. Red ink tends to stain the stamps, but they do get clean. And I'll tell you a trick that I do. I since red I use red often and it tends to set in here a lot and um, if you're cleaning a bunch of things you might get red on something that didn't have red on it before I only use this top left area for scrubbing my red things clean red ink off of things so this one's red and so I kind of do a little bit of a rainbow and then black is in the middle so I don't know if that's helpful but that's what I do so I do green down here so I know if I haven't washed this in a while, and you can wash it in the sink, you can take this whole tray out and just wash it with soap and water. But it takes a while to dry, so I don't wash it very often because I'm using it all the time. All right, this one's got a bunch of stuff on it, so I'm going to stamp that on some scrap paper first to get off some of that. Actually, rub it just on the corner here, just so there's less ink in my cleaning pad, you know. All right, and then, and then I'll rub it on the, the red area. <laughs> Polished pink, Julie says. All right, let's try that one. Okay, so here's what we're going with. And again, I want to push the ink into the pad, so I will just clean this off real quick with a baby wipe. And you can reuse the spoon in your craft room. Look at that. It's completely clean. That's a handy tool. All right. So we want to do this wood. Got to make sure on my scrap paper that my stamps are truly ink free. Because we're going to be stamping them into these nice pink pads. Okay. So here we go. Just press the ink down. I know that this one likes to have a somewhat dry ink pad. Okay, here we go, moment of truth. I think you're right, Julie. This one's probably gonna turn out a little bit better, um, showing up a little bit better than the Flirty Flamingo because of the base color, because it, it's already wood. Ooh, that looks cool. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Okay, so now Melon Mambo. This will be the leaves on around the edges. Oh, this looks cool. Haha. <laughs> Oops, getting ink on my fingers. Are you really having fun if you don't have ink on your fingers? <laughs> All right. And now, oh, this is so cute. Look at that. <laughs> and then we got Blackberry Bliss here. I'm going to do the words in the middle. Make sure my hole is straight up and down when I'm doing my, my words here. Make sure that that's inked up enough. It kind of looks like black. I wonder if I should do... 
Let's see. Okay, wait. Before I go forward, do I have a scrap piece of wood to try this color on that I had a mistake on? <laughs> All of these look pretty good. Hang on. All right, here's one. I tried to do the Scotty dog and it was not quite flat. All right, let's look and see if this looks purple enough. That looks pretty black, doesn't it? Let's try a different purple. Let's do, oh, where did it go? Rich Raspberry. Let's try this one. This one's kind of in the same color family, so I don't even need to really uh, wash this very well. I'm just going to stamp it off on my scrap paper there. All right, let's try this one. Next to there. That looks more purple. I think we should go with that one. What do you think? Right? Let's go with that one. I think that'll look good. All right, I'm going to put this dark one away. It's, it's purpley, but it looks pretty black. I don't know if you would tell that that was purple. So let's go with this one. All right, again, up and down. We've got Merry Christmas. And we'll put the dots on there. Our little purple berries. Well, they're definitely purple. That's cute. Oh, now I gotta find a ribbon that will match. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Any pink or purple will do, right? That I have in my stash, it might be retired, but we'll have to see what I got. But there's my pink and purple wreath. I think that's gonna go over well too. Isn't that cute? All right. So what do I have in my stash? Oh, look, I have polished pink. That looks really bright. That doesn't seem to match. I don't know. Well, let's see how it looks. You could always go with white or silver. Silver would look good. Let's see. Ooh, having trouble tying a bow. Yeah, I think the pink ink took on a t slightly different tone on the wood than what would match this ribbon. But it doesn't look too bad. I wish I had a rich raspberry ribbon. That would be nice. I do have this light purple one. Fresh freesia. Um, Oh, here's natural with the silver trim. Oh, this one's probably going to be it because it's natural. Yeah, I like this one. Look at that. That one's pretty. And did you know <clears throat> you can dye these the same color as your ink with one of our blends if you were just to color on top of it. So if I really wanted this to be a different color, I could color it. But I kind of like the natural with a hint of silver. <laughs> I got a big paper back here blocking the sun, so it seems to fall. That looks really cute. All right, so here is a green one and here is a pink one. Let me know which one is your favorite. I will go ahead and get all of these done for my craft fair and I will see you later. I will be back here with more fun crafting um, craft fair ideas throughout this whole month. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. If you missed the first one with the explosion boxes, go back and watch that one. And um, I would love for you to follow and share, join my email list for even more uh, inspiration and have a fabulous day, guys. Bye.